Hello, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me. I saw that we were having a little sound issues, but let me know if you guys can hear me now. Um, okay, I'm seeing now we can. Audio is perfect. I love it. I love it. I love it. So if you haven't let us know where you are Zooming from, please let us do. Some of you guys are messaging hosts and panelists, so make sure it's hitting to everyone so everyone can see it across the board. I want to know what organization you're with and where you are Zooming from. So I don't know if you guys know this, but this is our last session in our Giving Tuesday webinar series. So I just, I'm having a little moment over here. Give me, just give me one second, okay? I'm gonna miss this. I've enjoyed so much chatting with you guys and sharing so many tips and techniques and tricks to make sure your Giving Tuesday campaigns are knocked out of the park. Um, but I promise you, this might be the last, but I'll, let me tell you, it is not gonna be the least, okay? We are gonna end with a bang because today we are talking about how you can gear up for Giving Tuesday and beyond, okay? So with no further ado, let's just jump right into today's session. Who's ready? I love it. So, oh, Ellen is ready. I love it. Jessica's ready. Come on, tell it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love to see it. Well, today we are talking all things Giving Tuesday and beyond. Let's just jump right into the agenda. So as you guys know, we're going to do some welcome and introductions like we always do. I want to make sure you guys know who we are. We're going to do a quick rapid fire recap because if you didn't catch our other sessions, I want to make sure you know the top tips that we had in those. Then we're going to dive deep into our five tips for Giving Tuesday and beyond. Today's session is all focused on how you can actually take all the success that you're going to have on Giving Tuesday, because I know you will succeed, and how do you leverage that for an even better end of year campaign? We're going to end with some live Q&A because I know you guys, I know y'all love to ask questions, so we're going to give some specific time here for some just Q&A, um, and then we're going to go over some final Giving Tuesday reminders. Some housekeeping notes, and I always like to mention these. Please use the Q&A. So I love everything. You guys have so many questions. Use the Q&A feature so I can make sure that we get to each of them, okay? Comment and use emojis in the chat. You know I love when you talk back to me. If y'all haven't been in any of my sessions yet, you know I love to talk with y'all. I love to go back and forth with you people. So use emojis and use the chat. Let me know if you're feeling it. Um, keep the chat respectful and kind. Holly from our customer success team is going to be joining us and she's going to answer any questions that you guys might have. And then if you are in the Facebook fam, make sure you hit I'm in. Okay. If you're in the Facebook fam, comment I'm in because I want to know if you are in or not, okay? Um, and if not, we're going to drop the, the Facebook fam chat so you can join because that's where it's at, okay? If you don't know, <clears throat> if you don't know me by now, my name is Floyd Jones. I'm calling in today from Detroit. It's cold out here, y'all. If y'all from Michigan, y'all didn't tell me it's cold, okay? I'm not from here now. I just moved over here. It just started snowing the other day, but I'm bearing with it. We're, we're making it work little by little. I'm the success and partnerships manager here at GiveButter. I'm a fundraiser too, okay? So I've worked with organizations, small organizations my entire career. Um, and fun fact, I love to sing on my free time. So I want to tell you guys a little about all the things that we have from Giving Tuesday, okay? So first, if you haven't checked out our playbook, go to Giving Tuesday. You go to givebutter.com backslash giving dash Tuesday and check out the ultimate Giving Tuesday playbook, okay? We have so many resources that you could ever imagine. And I know, okay, if you're like some of some organizations, and trust me, I was in this camp too, okay? You may not even be far along in your Giving Tuesday journey, and that is okay, okay? Go to see our Giving Tuesday playbook. We can get you together step by step. But the big whammy that I want to share with you guys is about Give Butter Gives Back, okay? So if you haven't applied for this, I want to see how many of you guys already applied. If you've applied, put in the chat, I've applied. Or if you're going to apply, say, I will apply, okay? If you haven't heard, we are giving over $50 thousand dollars okay that's not fifty thousand coins okay that's not this is not fake money this is not applause okay this is real dollars okay we are giving over fifty thousand dollars to organizations 
all across Give Butter on Giving Tuesday, okay? We are choosing up to eight organizations who are going to win $5,000 and then up to 20 organizations who are going to win $500, okay? All the information and so much more is on givebutter.com backslash giving dash Tuesday, okay? That's givebutter.com backslash giving dash Tuesday. Don't forget the dash now. Some of y'all talking about, I didn't see it. Put the dash in there. That's why. Put the dash in there, okay? But no, if you want to be in that number, and I know you do, we are going to be giving up um, over $50,000 all throughout the day. We're going to be going live. We're going to be chatting online. We're going to be going sending out emails. And I want to see your name in there, okay? I want you to be counted in that number. So make sure you apply for this year's amazing award. We can't wait to see it and read your application. So without further ado, I want to jump into a couple of these recaps, okay? So Giving Tuesday season this year has been amazing. We've had some amazing sessions these past couple of weeks. We started off our first webinar with the topic of be inspired by change makers who raise big last Giving Tuesday. So you guys got to hear from all of these amazing organizations who have who raised a ton of money on Give Butter last year. And here were some of the main takeaways, okay? One. Add a creative twist to your campaign. So just do something. They were one of the organizations that was featured. They decided to do the 36 for 36 um, campaign. So what they did was they asked every single person to, to donate $36 on Giving Tuesday to celebrate their 36th anniversary. That was so unique. They got their people to mobilize and come around that, and they were able to raise thousands and thousands of dollars because of that. Two, be transparent. Let people know where your funds are going, okay? You could put the notes on the on the donation um, boxes that we give you the ability to do that. So that way your donors will know the full impact of their investment. Lead with video and digital storytelling. Okay, you know, I know, we all know a video. Okay, if they say a picture is worth a thousand words, then a video is probably worth a hundred thousand words, okay? Get some great storytelling techniques and tools out there to tell your story and loop and root people into what you are doing. And then lastly is the power of recurring donations. So that's going to probably lean a little bit into our theme today about Giving Tuesday and beyond. But remember, Giving Tuesday is just one day. Set everybody up for lots of success and set your organization up for long-term success by trying to mobilize recurring donors in that process as well. And remember, even if you guys missed out on any of these sessions, you're going to get this recording right after this, okay? So you can watch the recording, but then you also can go to givebutter.com backslash giving dash Tuesday. I keep on reminding y'all, and you can see the recordings there as well. So webinar number two, we talked about practical tips and best practices for Giving Tuesday success. And some of the top tips that we got from that was customize your page, okay? We give you so many tools on GiveButter to be able to customize, tell the story of your campaign, use them or lose them, okay? Two, update your supporters. We have great features like campaign updates. We have features like you can use email and messaging. Use those tools so you can update your supporters on how the campaign is going, how close you are to your, your goal, um, and letting people know what you're getting ready to do next. Try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So I'm a huge fan of peer-to-peer. -peer. I love a good peer-to-peer -peer campaign. Um, and this is a great opportunity for some time for, for organizations to try peer-to-peer -peer for the first time. Mobilize your volunteers, mobilize your board, mobilize other supporters to get on board with you and help you raise more than you could ever raise on your own. And then lastly, use momentum from Giving Tuesday to launch your year-end campaign. And that is actually the perfect segue for what we're going to talk about today. And that is Beyond Giving Tuesday. So all of the tips, all of the tricks, everything that we've talked about has gotten you up to Giving Tuesday. And Giving Tuesday is in just a couple of weeks. I know you all know. But we want to help you guys soar beyond Giving Tuesday. We don't want to just have you to have success for one day, but we want to be able to have you have success that's going to be long-lasting and far-reaching. Um, and that's what today's topic is all about. So we are joined by one of my great friends, Abigail. I'm so excited to, to have her join today. She is the co-leader at Imagine Pod. So I want to share a little bit more about what Imagine Pod does. 
So Imagine Pod coaches impact-minded teams to raise their donations and revenue and advocacy through cutting-edge marketing funnels and social media advertising. Abigail is a creative visionary, entrepreneur, and mom. She loves teaching French and West African culture to her kids. It's so funny. One of the first ways that Abigail and I first connected was around West African culture because my family is from Sierra Leone, fun fact. Uh, And since then, we have been long-term friends. So I am super, super excited. With no further ado, I would love to invite Abigail up. Floyd, thank you so much for having me. And hello, everyone. It's so exciting to be here, especially to talk about what we're going to be doing after Giving Tuesday. And I'd love to share a little bit more about how I actually came about starting Imagine Pod and what our whole philosophy is, what our mission is. Um, so my co-leader and I, her name is Adriana, we started Imagine Pod coming from 10 plus years in agency marketing, helping nonprofits and foundations of various sizes um, to be able to have successful marketing campaigns. And um, one of the things that really stood out to us was that regardless of the size of the organization, I mean, we worked with some that were actually international, mainly national nonprofits, and then some were more focused on like community-based work. But we found that across the board, most nonprofits are not fully sure how to automate their ability to cultivate relationships with supporters that actually create whatever actions they're needing, whether they need donations for fundraising or they need people to sign a petition or to volunteer or to purchase a product, whatever it is, we found that this was a a common issue across the board. And so what we wanted to do with Imagine Pod was coach and train any kind of social impact leader from any team, exactly how they could do that. So later on, I'll talk a little bit more about how we're solving that issue and some of this exciting successes we're seeing, but that is a little bit about us. And I'm so excited to pull from that experience and share all that we know about fundraising, especially after Giving Tuesday today. I love that. I love that. Well, Let's just go right on ahead and just jump right in to our top tips for going beyond Giving Tuesday. So, um, Abigail, do you want to start us off with tip number one? Absolutely. So the first tip that I have is something that I really, really fully believe in. I think probably most of us, if we can just think about our own personal experience as being donors around any type of fundraising campaign, whether it's Giving Tuesday or another, Um, that we really personally like being thanked and we like being thanked in a timely way and we like being seen and heard and we like it when we feel like people thanked us in a personalized way that's specific to how we gave or how much we gave or who we are and the history that we have with the organization, right? Um, The other day I actually received a card from my, my old high school where they thanked me for work that I've done there and said that they were celebrating me today. And it was like a handwritten card. And I was like, I looked at my husband and I said, how can we give to the scholarship fund? Because it just meant so much to me. And that actually just naturally produced generosity in me. And I wanted to think about how can I give more? And so that's what happens. It's psychology 101. We want to make sure that coming out of Giving Tuesday, we immediately have a way to personalize a response for what people have given. That might look like actual handwritten notes, especially if you have donors where it's a smaller pool of them and they actually like getting mailers sent to their mailbox. But for some of us, it might mean that you need to use a platform where you can actually just send a personalized video message from your team or having a way to automate being able to put their name into the message, things like that. But the best thing to do is just make sure you have a plan so that after Giving Tuesday, especially within about 48 hours, you can go ahead and send them a creative way that means something to your donors to say thank you. I love that. I love that. I love that. I think that we it's so easy to underestimate the importance of having that customization. And I think in that same 
vein, we talk a lot about customizing your auto thank you message. So a lot of people, um, if you guys are using GiveButter, because I know some people on this call use GiveButter, some people do not. Um, but when you use a GiveButter campaign, we have built an auto thank you message um, component. So anytime a donor makes a donation, they're automatically going to get a message. But a lot of times I've seen campaigns not going that extra mile to customize that messaging. Um, and so I want to encourage you to do that now. Make sure you go in there and you actually customize that messaging. You can add hyperlinks, you can add photos, you can add any specific call to action that you would like, whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> you can be specific in that regard and customize that there. And then in that same vein, I would also encourage people to um, use the engage feature. I know I've been talking about this on on end from session to session, um, but I really would encourage you guys to continue using the engage feature that we have on GiveButter. It's your own in-house email service. So you're gonna, not only are you gonna get your um your emails to be customized in terms of you're gonna have custom branding, your logo is gonna be on every single email, but another powerful thing is that you can actually segment who you're sending your messages to, okay? So for example, Say you having a bunch of $50 donors who gave you $50 on Giving Tuesday, okay? You can create a customized filter in your um, in the transactions tab of GiveButter, but then in Engage, you can send an email specifically to those $50 donors and say, hey, I noticed that you guys gave us $50 uh, during our campaign. And I want to let you know, $50 was able to buy this XYZ thing for XYZ constituent group. We have a few more days of this year, and we're asking for you to donate $50 one more time. Can you do this? Making it personal so that you know, hey, this is not just a drop in the bucket. This money is not something that I saw today and it's gone tomorrow, but it's something that's actually meaningful. And I'm going to make sure my message is meaningful. will go a long way as well. So I want to also go to tip number two. So tip number two is share your campaign's impact. And we talk about this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But it's so incredibly important. And it's important because people want to know what their money is doing. People want to know, and not just what their money is doing, but how they are a part of your movement, okay? And the greater movement that you are building. And one thing that I always say and what I always think about when I'm coming from the approach of development and fundraising is that these dollars is not just money and, and going arbitrary anywhere. It's dollars that are helping fuel a mission. And ultimately, there are people associated or you know, whatever your constituent group is, is associated with the, with this mission. You know what I mean? And so sharing that impact and sharing what the dollars are going to goes such a long way. And we have tools like our campaign updates. You can put campaign milestones on, the camp, on, on your campaign pages and all those different things go a long way. Also, you can add offline donations. One thing I noticed is that a lot of people have... Um, have you know matching donors and matching donations that come place on on these campaigns and whatnot utilize adding offline gifts um onto the page so then that way people can actually see hey they have a matching donor this year so let me let me just try this next 24 hours to help them reach that goal it really does go a long way um, uh, we, we just mentioned the idea of using campaign updates, but another thing I would mention, I'm not sure if you guys know, but we do integrate directly with Canva and YouTube. So you can actually go and customize the, the, the post that you're going to be posting on the campaign updates. And it's so easy to integrate that directly into your update and really just keep it fresh, keep it active for people who are watching. Um, Abigail, do you want to share tip number three? Yes, Absolutely. And this one is really, really important because it touches on what we talked about before, where you're actually sending a more personalized touch to your donors when you send them a follow-up message, when you send them a thank you message. And one of the best ways to do that is you actually have to track and gather data from your donors and have a platform that allows you to tag them properly and segment them properly around the actions that they're taking, around the history that they have with your organization. And then when you can track that, then you can look at that data and more easily decide as a team, how is it that we want to personalize our messages to them after Giving Tuesday? Mm. You know, nearly 31% of annual giving happens in December. 
So we definitely want to capitalize on this time of year where such a high percentage of annual giving occurs. And one of the best ways to do that is quite simple. It's really just thinking about how do we send messaging to people that hints at more of our personal relationship with them. So that could mean that you're segmenting some of your emails to um, maybe newer donors. So you're going to give them maybe a different version of a thank you email to people who've given for the first time this past Giving Tuesday um, than to those who maybe have been giving often or maybe they participated in last year's Giving Tuesday. Or maybe you're going to do it based off of donation size. So you're giving a different you know, uh, message or thank you email to people who've given at a certain level versus those who are at a different donor level. But whatever it is, it's important to have that data. You need a platform that can allow you to see that, to easily track it, and then easily segment people into those separate lists so that your messaging can be a bit more personal and a bit more, um, in, you know, really understands the context of who they are. Um, and in that way, you're able to really speak to them as people, as human beings, not just as numbers in a list. And that allows you to then have messaging that speaks to them and gets them really excited about giving even beyond Giving Tuesday before you know the new year. You want to make sure that you have messaging that creates a sense of urgency and makes them excited to not delay it just because mm -hmm. they just gave or just participated and maybe they've been super generous with your organization and others. You want to make sure that you give them a reason to feel like, wow, I'm so touched and moved by what they're sharing. I want to give again during the holidays before the new year. Wow, I really love that. And I think that that's something that, you know, I know you're going to touch on towards the end of this of this session, but the, 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 the importance of your messaging to your donors, the importance of communicating the right message to the right subset and at the right time. Right. And so one of the things I know you're going to talk about is building out, uh, you know, your email campaigns and your email series and whatnot. But I want to share a little bit more about how you can analyze that data on GiveButter. Um, and we've talked a little bit about this before, but the importance of creating filters and segments. I This is another thing that I, I know I see um, organizations not really utilizing this feature, but really being able to build out, you know, your your segments and segmenting your, your donor groups based off of it. And it doesn't even have to be building a segment off of a donor, of a, off of a donation amount. I know I gave the example earlier of, you know, $50 donors, but what if you're giving, what if you're making a, um, a, a filter based off of people who attended events in the past, or you're making a filter and a segment off of, um, you know, people who have given via mobile wallet and you see people who donated via Venmo, maybe they're going to be more likely to, to share your message on social media. You know, there's so many different things that you could think about. But the most important thing is you need to know your donor. I always say, know thy donor, know thy donor. You need to know your your donor group um, because that's, that's going to impact the message that you share with them. So definitely utilizing the filter and segmenting um, feature. And then also we, we talk a lot about inviting people into your community. Tell us a little bit more about, about that tip. Absolutely. And this is one of the things that I feel like all of you who are here today, you get this because people who work for social causes and in social impact, you see people as people, right? Like you're not getting into this just because you want people to pull out their wallet. <laughs> you really are getting into this because you're hoping to help people be able to make meaningful actions that overall create impact, that fund your programs, that allow people to really do the work that needs to happen in communities or maybe even around the world internationally that's going to move the needle in some way to make the world better. So you understand that it's not just about people giving, but they need to also be involved in other ways. And it makes sense that if people are invested in your social cause and in your nonprofit by volunteering or supporting things, you know, they're moving up that ladder of engagement and hopefully taking more ownership over the work that they're able to do to support your cause. They're probably doing many things. They're following you. They're sharing things. They're volunteering for things. They're doing a lot more than just donating. And what happens is, surprise, surprise, if people are involved in those other ways and they've already been so much more invested in terms of their time, their energy. I mean, think about 
what it does for someone's self-identity when they put out there that this is a social cause that means something to me. I want you, my friends and my family and my peers at work to support it too. When they've done all of that, then asking for a donation is something that's quite simple. And in a lot of ways, it's not even as big of a commitment. So I think it's really important to remember that you don't want to just be hitting people up for donations, but thinking about overall holistically, how do we allow people to be able to participate with us in doing the greater work? And when they've done that in a variety of diverse ways, then donating is a simple way that they continue to do it when we ask them, because they're already doing other things that are in some ways a lot bigger of an ask. So that's one of the things that I love to do is just help people remember, think about your donor holistically. Think about how else do you want them to be involved even after or before they're giving in a a fundraising campaign so that when you do ask for them to pull out their wallet and just vote with their dollars and say, we want the world to be better in this way and we're going to help you in this way, maybe for a specific program or whatever it may be, that's something that's a no-brainer for them. And that's what you're working up to um, year round. I love that. Oh, come on, Abigail. So that leaves me to our last point before you kind of do a little bit of a deeper dive. And that's the importance of creating a welcome series. So I'm not sure if you guys know this, but 63% of Giving Tuesday donors only give on Giving Tuesday. Okay. That means they're just hearing about you. Someone invited them to donate and they're giving on Giving Tuesday. And that's about it. So how are we now able to capture more of these Giving Tuesday donors for the long term? How are we able to actually build out, you know, an email series or build out, you know, a series of, of, of touch points so then that way they don't, we not just bring them in on Giving Tuesday, but we keep them for the long haul. So, you know, on Giving, on Gift Butter, you can map out a cadence calendar. So you can actually schedule your emails in advance to those specific subsets that we talked about. Um, and each email can share more stories. It can share more advice. It can share more insight on your cause, on your on your, on your your issue area, and also hearing from your constituents. Um, you can send different messages at different times as well. And I actually want to turn the rest of, of what we're going to be talking about this time to you, Abigail, to share a little bit more about how people can build out this series. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that I always like to start with is just reminding people that investing in your email list building efforts and investing in having a really strong welcome series where email is a really great way to build relationships, especially with new people who maybe have never heard of you before. It is really well worth it. I think a lot of times we allow maybe our personal experience with email or things that people say about email dying or whatever kind of get in the way of the fact that data speaks for itself and that year over year email has held strong, especially when it comes to conversions to um, fundraising campaigns. It's just one of those things that we've seen year over year. And what I would encourage you all to do is to go to benchmarking reports to actually look specifically at what's going on with fundraising and email. I love to go to MNR benchmarks. You can go there to see specifically for your sector, specifically for your size of an organization. They divide things based off of social media following size and email list size. And you can see for organizations of our type, how is email performing in terms of fundraising? And so what you'll see here are just some of the statistics that I pulled from their latest report all about 2020, where they um, looked at dozens of organizations and found that, yes, email metrics went up in 2020. It might not be too shocking because of the pandemic. And obviously, people were online more, right? They're, we're doing everything online now. But this is an increase that we've seen every single year. When you look at those benchmarks, it's like, well, email conversions still keep increasing. It looks like, you know, for every 1,000 fundraising messages that nonprofits send, they raise about $78. And in some sectors, like the hunger and poverty sector that they have, so that means nonprofits that fall under that category, um, they were actually raising $871 per 1,000 fundraising emails sent. So that's a huge increase from 2019 and 2020. And so I just, I cite those to show people and say that investing as a team and having a really strong email list building mechanism and a strong welcome series could be really, really great for longevity and fundraising and building good relationships with leads. So that's definitely something that you should look into so that you can really make decisions based on data and metrics 
um, over anything else. And then also another thing that I always love to talk about is not just specifically about all of those data points, but then also thinking about um, why is it that we want to build an email list and maybe prioritize that over other marketing efforts? Because I think it's sometimes hard for organizations to know what do we prioritize? We can't do everything, right? And the truth is, is that building an email list means you're building an asset that you actually own. And so it's one of the best things that you could be focused on. And I think, again, it's one of the places where you're going to find some of the highest conversion rates to whatever actions you're asking people to do year round, especially if you've set up your email list building properly and set up your email welcome series properly, and you understand how to tag, how to segment, and you're working as a team to doing that better and better. I mean, you start with where you are, you use great tools like Give Butter, and you just keep working on optimizing and, and making making those better year over year. And what you're going to find is that overall, you're building up something that the organization can use that will outlast changes that happen with social media algorithms or with data privacy issues and things like that. Um, we don't know always what's going to happen with social media. And so the best thing that you can do is just know that we're actually building out what I would call a way, a pathway to always access the people that we are trying to build a relationship with, regardless of what else is going on. So it's a very, very powerful thing to invest as an organization in your, your, um, in your email list building. Um, and then the other thing that I always say is that you don't need to then forget about social media. I, I don't believe that you need to say, okay, we only focus on our email marketing and we don't do anything else. But what you should do instead is think about how can we strategically use social media and especially the places where we have high engagement, maybe in stories or in video content or with social media ads, and then funnel most of those users that we're getting into our email list by always asking at key moments for them to join or giving them key lead generation content that allows them to then choose to opt into our email list so that we're using those other platforms just as we normally would, but making sure that those are investing in the asset that our organization owns long-term that we can really control and make sure that we are using um, for fundraising and other actions over the long-term, regardless of what's changing in the world. And one of the, the most exciting tools that we use at Imagine Pod, this is specifically what we teach. It's one of the things that we're most excited about is we use quiz funnels to do just that. So we help organizations figure out how can we create a funnel, which is really just a tool that automates our way to bring people into our email list and then cultivate a relationship with them. And when you have it set up properly, it's a great way for your team to create it well, tune it in, and then you guys can move on to other things. And you have people joining your email list and feeling like they are building a relationship with you and taking key actions while you're focused on other things because it is automated, it's on autopilot. And so that's one of the things that we absolutely love. But quiz funnels are really unique, especially in comparison to other types of funnels that you might um, see out there. And it's kind of interesting. Funnels are just one of those terms that people use in marketing that I think can be a little bit kind of confusing to understand what is it really, what makes a quiz funnel maybe unique in comparison to others. Well, here are some things that make it really unique. Quiz funnels are an automated way to quickly transform people who've never heard of you before into people who are pulling out their wallet or they are signing a petition within a couple of minutes. That is really powerful. Most of the time when you have maybe ads running to a petition page or to some type of donor page, you have very low conversion rates because there's no real good transition between people who aren't really thinking about that while they're scrolling on Facebook to then them being like, yes, absolutely, I'm going to do this. But quizzes provide that. It's a very beautiful, powerful way to allow people to transition really seamlessly and quickly into that. The other thing is, is that obviously when people are taking a quiz, they are answering questions, right? So they're giving very personalized responses to the types of questions that are really unique to you as an organization, to your social cause and the things that you want to know specifically about your donors. 
Um, most social media platforms like Facebook can give you general information, mainly about people's demographics, but they can't give you insight into how does somebody feel about a social cause or what's their history with something. But if you have a quiz that has questions around that, then you can actually get that type of data from these new leads, which is so, so invaluable. And then the next thing is that it allows you to share results with them. So when people take the quiz, they're answering the questions, then they get a personalized result page, and then you're able to tell them a little bit about themselves, right? It's all about them. And then you get to say, hey, look, you got this result that said you care about this X, Y, or Z, right? And so I think that means that you would probably love what we're doing because this is what we care about. This is what we do. This is actually what we try to do to help people like you make an impact in this area. So it's a really beautiful way to be able to help make a connection, almost as if you would if you were in a conversation with a new donor one-on-one, -on -one, right? What would you want to do? You'd want to learn about them and you'd want to make a connection between who they are and the work that you do. Well, a quiz allows you to do that. The other thing is, is that it's a gamified journey of transformation. That's why people love to take quizzes because it's fun, because it's something that's like, it's about them. They get to, you know, discover something new about themselves and they get to share it with people. And so it's like a fun process. So it's really about building a relationship off of adding value first. You're not talking about yourself. You're not saying, hey, hey, save this, save the animals, save the children, do this, do, you know, all about us and our work. It's really about, hey, hey. Who are you? Do you want to discover something about yourself? And then you give them that sense of like, this is kind of fun. I want to share it with my friends and family. It has inherent virality to it. Most of the time when we run quiz funnels, we get some really good traction with ads. And then we start to see the share, you know, icon on that platform just, just kind of takes it away. We get all this organic traffic as well, because people love to share their results and then they want to know what other people are going to get. And so it's just has that in inherent virality. People want to share something that's more of a fun experience more than they do just an image, right? And then the other thing is, is that we've learned it's probably the best way you can get people to take an action around a heavy social cause. A lot of times we work on issues that people don't want to talk about on Facebook or they just don't feel comfortable about, or maybe tensions are high around that because of things that are happening in the wider world. And so when you have a fun quiz, you can get at really, really heavy topics pretty easily and seamlessly and get people to actually engage with you and make a connection with you. So those are just some of the ways that quiz funnels are really, really effective. And I think that makes them stand out. Um, but I wanted to showcase one really specific example so you can just kind of see what does this look like then for a real organization? Well, here is one of our um, clients. Their name is Ability Path. They are an amazing organization in the Silicon Valley that is working to create more inclusive communities specifically for people with developmental disabilities. And so they wanted to really have a quiz funnel that was running to talk about an issue that they felt made people often uncomfortable. Um, and they wanted to be be able to do it specifically to see if they could get donations and to see if they could have a sub list of people who've taken the quiz that would be ready for Giving Tuesday and year-end giving. And so what we did was we created a quiz with them. We created the initial version a couple months ago. We're now running, I think this is version three with them. We optimize things and it's just incredible to see. I mean, I wish I could tell you all the details, but just a little bit of a summary is that they had a 70% completion rate so far with the quiz, which means 70% of the people who start it actually finish all the way through. People are segmenting themselves on the specific issues of inclusivity for people with developmental disabilities that they care about. Again, the type of personalized data that's so awesome to get from people who are potential donors off the bat that no other social platform could ever really give you. Um, so we're getting to see, okay, for the people who are taking this quiz, 12% of them care about inclusivity with employment, but 36% of them care about children and inclusivity, which is so interesting. And then we have a seven part welcome email series that cultivates them specifically with a donation ask. And so that's one of the things that's so powerful is these people are totally new donors, maybe have never heard of Ability Path, answering questions in a quiz, and then going to donate on the back end of it on the donation page. So I'll show you now the donation page and kind of what that looks like. And what you'll see is that, I mean, really it's quite simple. Oh, and here, before we get there, this kind of shows you just the data that you can get on the back end of a quiz where you can see how many people have took the quiz, um, who are the participants, 
what are, who are it's opting in. That means they're giving their email, things like that. So I love the data that you can get from QuizFunnels. It's just phenomenal. But if you go to the next slide, then you'll see this is what their donation page looks like, right? It's, it's, very, um, it's very practical. It has all of the elements that you need, imagery, storytelling, a Donate Now page. But what was more powerful than the Donate page was the actual vehicle that brought people there, which was the quiz. And I wanted to include some screenshots of how happy AbilityPath has been with getting donations. With just a couple of days, they started getting them on autopilot coming through. Up until just a couple of days ago on November 10th, they told us that they received $200, which is the highest level of donation they got with a quiz funnel for this, for this quiz, um, which is so exciting. I mean, we're celebrating with them. It's just amazing to see, which is blowing a lot of their past fundraising efforts and some of the 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 metrics that they had seen just out of the water because the quiz itself is really doing a lot of the work for them on autopilot which is so so cool so this gives you a little bit of a picture of what we're doing specifically at imagine pod and what we're really focused on right now which is helping social impact organizations be able to automate that process year round of how do we have an email series and a funnel for bringing people in who are new to our organization that cultivates them for key moments like Giving Tuesday and beyond. We really want people to learn, you know, how do you use a tool that's been used for years in the for-profit space? Now it's time for us in the social impact world to learn how do we do that and bring people in on autopilot. Um, so we actually have a quiz which can be sent out by um, Give Butter afterwards and follow up materials that is specifically for helping people learn that. So if you want to know, okay, maybe for our organization, what would a funnel look like that would work for us to help us do that? We actually have our own quiz specifically on that to help you figure out what funnel would unlock your organization's hidden potential. Um, and yeah, so we'll be really excited to share that with everybody so you can kind of figure out what that would look like. And it's also a really great example of what does it look, feel like to go through a quiz funnel? So I definitely encourage people to um, check that out. I just love this. This is giving us all types of insight. I love it. I love it. I love it. But we have a lot of questions. So I just want to jump right in. Um, so this first question is actually for me. Um, how do you, for our audience, let everybody know, how do you actually see quiz funnels fitting into this larger topic that we're talking about in terms of Giving Tuesday and beyond? Do you see it fitting in before Giving Tuesday? Do you see it something that, that people can launch after Giving Tuesday? How do you, how do you, how do you see it fitting in? Absolutely. The way that we tend to look at a fundraising calendar is very holistically. So the first thing I think people should do is think about where are we right now? What can we do to have a successful Giving Tuesday campaign? And then doing what we can to be able to then cultivate relationships with those givers to remind them why, why should they give again before the end of the year? And then as you're going into the new year, be thinking about the next Giving Tuesday and the next end of year fundraising campaign you're going to do, even though it might seem so far out. But when you do that, then you're able to look at the whole year and or whatever your fiscal year is for your nonprofit, because that's different based on every organization and, and um, sector. But you look at your full fiscal year and you think about how can we create asks of our donors throughout the year that are coherent, that make sense, that have a theme, that are really matching our social cause and in the, the feeling and energy of our organization. So for example, I spoke with somebody who has implemented now four Giving Tuesday campaigns, and she said the most successful campaign her organization ever ran was when they started the theme of radical generosity months ahead of Giving Tuesday and asked people to do things like be able to share something anonymously with a neighbor, just leave it on their porch or something. It's like cool actions like that throughout the year and telling people, tell us what happened, share your stories. And they had this whole theme of radical generosity it tied it into various campaigns, including Giving Tuesday, of course. And they're going to be able to then use that creatively for end of year giving where it all kind of seems to flow together. And I think with quiz funnels, you want to do that. You want to plug in a quiz topic that can be used throughout the whole year. 
and you're cultivating automatically a relationship with those givers and those donors that then you can go to in a segmented way and say, hey, you took our quiz about this, you participated in this thing, here's something that we have going on right now that we think that you would love to be a part of. So I think that the holistic view is the most important. And then it's really unique to an organization to know where would you want to use a quiz funnel, specifically what would the topic be, what would the purpose be, um, things like that. I love that. I love that. And it's really going to this grander theme that we keep talking about and the idea of building long-term relationships with your donors, that it's really, you know, giving Tuesday, even if it's not a big day for you and your fundraising um, for your organization, let it be a touch point. Let it be a great touch point to begin grander relationships that way you can reach even more success and bring more people in the fold. And I think that's like something that quiz funnels really can do, which I love. Jessica, our friend Jessica Collier says, these quiz funnels sound really interesting. How do total newbies create one? Are there existing templates or anything like that? Great question, Jessica. Yeah, it's a great question. And right now, quiz funnels are doing really, really well. I think they're used often more for for-profit businesses that are list building, specifically for new customers and things like that. So there are many platforms out there. I would say that there are a lot of really great kind of beginner platforms that you can do. Just even if you just Google quiz funnel platforms, you will find some really, really good ones that people are using. Um, and it makes it quite simple. I mean, you probably within 30 minutes could set up a quiz in any of those platforms. It has a really great user experience where you, you have the header, you put in all the questions, you decide um, you know, kind of how the, the answers are going to map to results people get. And you probably have like an image bank that they pull in where you can put in pictures and things like that. So when you're a newbie and you're a beginner, it's quite easy right now because of the platforms that are available to create one. Um, I think what's the most important, which is not always easy to do, is really understanding how to create a quiz funnel that is optimized for the action you want people to take and that also is optimized for the types of data you want from them. Mm -hmm. So if you're a nonprofit that's thinking about, we really want a funnel that works year round, that brings in donations on autopilot of a certain level for specific programs that we wanna fund, or maybe just in general to increase our annual budget, whatever it may be. What you wanna do is then step back and think more strategically as a team and think about what would the topic be that would help us get to that. And at Imagine Pod, we have a whole process we walk people through to get to that. But the actual logistics of setting up a quiz funnel is quite easy and I think quite fun. I, you know, you could just pick one platform and just kind of test it out and try it. It's a lot of fun. I love that. Speaking of platforms, we have a lot of questions around platforms. So there's kind of two, uh, two different platform questions, but I'll just summarize it. Do you have one platform in particular that you recommend or is it, you know, it, what's best for your organization? Yes. So, um, what, so at Imagine Pod, we have looked at a few different platforms, but we kind of put them into like two categories. So I think one that's really great to start with if you've never done it before and you want something that's a really low barrier to entry to just get a quiz out there that you could just share quickly or that you want to just test out as a team, we definitely recommend Interact. Um, and that is a platform that we have personally run quizzes through. We have lots of different clients that are using Interact because it is so simple and easy. And we think that it's actually better to get an initial version out so that you can optimize it and test um, and do several iterations before you have one that's like really fully tuned in that's working well. But in terms of one that is a bit more sophisticated, we personally use a platform that we use for our own personal quizzes as ImaginePod, and then also for clients that want us to run quizzes for them, where we implement it, we look at the data, we set it up, all of that, and we use one called Bucket.io. They are probably the most sophisticated quiz funnel platform out there, or at least one of them, because they were created by um, their the founder of a sister company that is like one of the leaders of quiz funnels for for profit businesses. Um, and so they are really sophisticated. And I think right now they don't have their latest version available to the public. We happen to have gotten in at a good time and we do. But they're one that, especially when they do open their doors to the 2.0 version, I would definitely recommend them if your organization is like feeling really comfortable with quiz funnels and ready to kind of take it to the next level. I love that. Um, few other questions. So 
from Hannah Lowe asks, if you choose a theme for the year that all your campaigns tie into, how would you change quizzes throughout the year or would you try to optimize just one? So that's a really great question. My perspective on this is that you always want to um, do just one thing until you have mastered it, <laughs> especially when it comes to marketing. Um, I have found over the years that people are not always prepared for the process that marketing takes to really get something tuned in and well done. And a lot of times we're scattered and we do a lot of different things, or if we don't see quick results in one, we move on to the next. And in the marketing world, there's all these new tactics and things that that just look flashy and great. And so we're jumping all over. My suggestion would be have one that can be evergreen and master it and get it working well for your organization. What that will mean for you is really specific to your organization, but it could mean that it's sustainable, right? That it is producing the revenue or the donations that you need to actually cover the expenses, whether you're running ads to it, the person power to optimize it and management, all of that. Um, and then from there, you can really create a quiz for anything. You can create a quiz specific to one campaign. You can create a quiz that's all about just bringing people into your email list and there's literally nothing else you want them to do. You can create a quiz for anything at that point. But my suggestion would be stick with one for now and optimize it till it's reaching the goal that you want it to. And then you can expand from there and branch out and, and try other things. I love that. And then one quick question before we um, close things out from Francie. Is there a magic number of quiz questions for a first time try? Yeah, so it's recommended that you stick to anywhere between 10 to 12 questions. Um, we've seen some quizzes do well that have like maybe like six or seven the, the it's kind of an art. I mean, what you want to do is make sure you have enough questions that people feel like you actually have asked enough of them that you could diagnose something and actually tell them a result. Um, people don't want to feel like you only asked two or three questions and then they're like, how do you know this about me? You didn't even ask enough, you know? <laughs> but then you also don't want so many that people aren't completing it and they're totally just bored or like over the process and they're not getting to the end. So sticking into that kind of that zone of like maybe seven to 12 questions typically is a best practice. And then the best thing to do is after you've come up with questions, you want to plug it into your platform like Interact or Bucket.io and you want to take it and you want other people in your team to take it and then get a feel for what is it like to actually take the quiz. That's the ultimate test. And then if you feel like it's too long or too short, you adjust from there. I love that so much. Thank you so much. How? What is the best way for people to be in touch with you? That's awesome. So yeah, we are um, launching a new quiz, like I said, to help people understand what quiz funnel could help them specifically around year long list building. So that would be a great way. If you take that quiz and you decide to join our mailing list, we are going to be reaching out specifically to those who joined this Give, Give Butter webinar um, and giving you great resources because of that. But the other way really is just to email us. So both my co-leader and I are available via email. You you can email me at abigail at imaginepod.com or my co-leader Adriana at imaginepod.com. And we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Abigail. Was this helpful, y'all? If y'all thought this was helpful, say yes in the comments. Say yes. I want to see Y-E-S in the comments. Thank you so much, Abigail. Well, we have just a few more things that I want to cover with everybody. One is just like um, Abigail was saying, Abigail is one of our many Give Butter experts. She is wonderful and she is in good company as well. So if you want to work with Abigail or any of our Give Butter experts, just go to www.givebutter.com backslash experts. That's www givebutter.com backslash experts. And then, of course, find Abigail. You can reach out to her directly through GiveButter, or you can, of course, email her, as she had mentioned, abigail at imaginepod.com. So I have a final few giving important Giving Tuesday reminders. These are our last Giving Tuesday reminders that you're going to hear from me until after Giving Tuesday. So submit your Giving Tuesday campaign, okay? 
go to give you know you already know what it is givebutter.com backslash giving dash tuesday remember submit your giving tuesday campaign by november 23rd okay it doesn't even have to be complete by then but just make sure you submit it by november 23rd because that is the absolute last day that we are going to be accepting any applications okay so make sure you go and submit your campaigns also, fill out our webinar feedback survey. Okay, I know y'all don't love an extra thing to do, okay? But we are currently building out all of our um, uh, our webinars for next year. Um, and we want to make sure that we are producing the most engaging content for you all. If you want to just talk about how much you love me. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. But what I want you to do is tell us, what do you like? What don't you like about our Give Better webinars? What do you want to see more and what that we have to do? Please, please, please fill that feedback survey out. It will be, it's going to be in this presentation when we send it out, but it's also going to be a direct link in the email that we sent to you guys as well, okay? It is only seven questions, okay? And five of the seven questions are multiple choice. It is not going to be that hard, okay? Fill out that survey. And then lastly, check out um, the Giving Tuesday playbook okay again we have the final resources that are in there to help you guys take your campaign to the next level and to help you soar so please check that out all right so i want to just say thank you again this has been such a privilege launching this giving tuesday webinar series has been so exciting chatting with you guys for these past few weeks and i cannot wait to see how each and every one of you soars on giving tuesday and remember if you did not join our facebook fam please go ahead and click that link and join our facebook um fam okay we're going to be chatting all day on giving tuesday and beyond that's all i got for y'all today okay Thank you again. You guys bless me. And I hope that this was a helpful conversation for you guys. Remember, we are in this together. We are the Give Better fam, all right? Peace and blessings and have a good one. You turned this from an idea in a dorm room into the number one rated fundraising platform on the internet. You raised over $100 million for charitable causes just in the last year. You are making the world a better place, one gift at a time.